chair around. We're gonna go casual or more casual or more casual. Be more casual and each one of them be gay. <laughs> I saw that commercial <laughs> for bowling in pajamas. Did you have bowling in pajamas? Well, next thing we know, we have church in pajamas. Yeah, <laughs> church people. Yeah, you do it. Actually, that you used to have that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Emmanuel, since you got water, <laughs> why don't you come over and read for us? <laughs> you take your glass. <laughs> Daniel, one. Tenth chapter, starting in verse one. Daniel 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by, my side, by the side of the gate of the great river, that is, the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded up, whose girded with gold, of Utah. His body was like barrel, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished, burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Then I, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them, so, they, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore, I, I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, 
And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, I, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, the words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, who came to help me, for I have been left alone now with the king of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, <coughs> for the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one, having the likeness of the sons of men, touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me. And I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with me, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Yet again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. <coughs> Peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you, have strengthened you. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one opposes me against these except Michael, your prince. We've been talking about prayer, and the reason we've been talking about prayer, how many of you know why we've been doing this on prayer? We need to pray. We need to pray. You know, we, we get confused as Christians. A lot of times we start to think that because we know something, it's the same as doing it. We know what to do, but we don't do it. But we think because we know it, that's got the face covered. Everybody knows to pray. Even as a heathen, people know how to pray know that prayer is what they should do mm -hmm. but people aren't praying yeah. a lot of reasons for that but I wanted to we need God to touch us and help us mm -hmm. and one of the areas that uh, is most important is our prayer life I want to look tonight with you at how prayer affects the people that we pray for. Open your Bibles, someone, open your Bible, actually you can all do it, to James 5. James 5, starting verse 8. And we're going to read down through verse 20. You got it? Yep. All right. James 5, starting in verse 8. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren. Lest you be condemned. 
Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brother, and take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or any other oath, but let your yes be yes, and let your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the ambulance. That is what it said. Mm -hmm. It says, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him in the name of the Lord. Why would we do that? Verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly, but it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced its fruit. Why? Why is it important? What happens when we pray? Well, God answers our prayer. When, who here has been, how, how long have you been saved? We're going to go around the, the corner here. How, how long have you been saved? <laughs> A week and a half. <laughs> A week and a half. So your whole life, born in the kingdom, hallelujah. <laughs> Sis, how, how long you been saved? Me? Yep. Since uh, I got saved in 86. 86? Yeah. What's that? 30, yeah, almost 30 years. <laughs> Stephen. So 30, 20, 24 years. Meters? Eleven. Eleven years. That's a pretty good record. Yeah. Chrissy, how long? Um, uh, how old are you? I'm not going to say that. I was 17. 40. Oh, since I was 17. Okay. Lorena, how long? 37 years. 37 years. Mom, how long have you been saved? 24. 24 years. Yeah. What? Five years, Daniel. Emmanuel. Okay. I want you to think back. When you first got saved. When you first got saved and you prayed for something, did you pray with more faith then or now? <laughs> then? Then? Now. Now. now? now. So it's kind of a split deal. People, when they first get saved, they believe right away that God's going to do it. Mm -hmm. But 
we get hornswoggled the longer we live for the Lord sometimes. And we wind up wondering whether God is going to do it or whether he hears or whether he's paying attention or what we did wrong. Someone open up. Daniel, open up, and I want you to read loud so Mom can hear you. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Pray him. Just do it, Daniel. Finally. Turn around it towards her. We can hear you. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet plant, uh, fitted in readiness, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me whenever I speak words. Whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely as I should. Good job talking about prayer but we're talking about a different kind of prayer we're talking about spiritual warfare now spiritual warfare I mean all right when we when you prayed first do you think the devil fought your prayers yeah. yes when you pray now, the devil fights your prayers. But the longer we've been saved, the Bible says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. In other words, we should learn somewhere along the line that there is a warfare going on when we pray. Daniel talked about, well, Daniel didn't say it, but the angel told him that he was being withstood by another demonic force. When you pray, there is a warfare going on. But the Bible tells you to do certain things. And then having done all the stand, stand. Just don't give up. Don't waver. Are you... Are you praying spiritual warfare? Are you, are you taking authority over the devil? Or do, have, you, have you just left that part of it out? See, part of our prayer, church, is spiritual warfare. Yeah. It's not just God do this, God do that. There's a demonic force, and God said, whatsoever... You bind on earth. Yeah. It's not just God. He said, I want you to do this. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth. In other words, you have authority. God gave you the keys to the house. And he said, I want you to rule and reign and walk in dominion. And it doesn't matter, church, whether you feel like it or not, A, God hears you, and B, you have authority. And your authority comes from God. When you pray, it's you praying, but it's not. The prayer being answered is not your responsibility. 
Are you listening to me? Yes. See, some people don't pray for others to be healed, saved, whatever. Because they think, well, I haven't been saved long enough, or I'm not good enough, or I've done too many things wrong. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't say anything about that. The Bible just tells us to pray. And that God will fight our battle. But you and I have been given authority. So we're not trusting in our own abilities. I've had people call me over the years and they, they say, Pastor, I need you to come over and pray for this. And I ask him, did you pray? Well, no, we're waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Well, what for? How come you're not praying? Well, because you're supposed to come over and pray. Well, the Bible tells us that uh, it's not our own righteousness. The question is not whether you feel righteous. The question is, are you praying? Because your prayers make a difference in the kingdom. In the kingdom of heaven kingdom of hell. Jesus said that he was the vine and we're the branches. The only way that we bear fruit is by being connected to the Lord. The only way your prayers are going to be effective is if you have a relationship with the Lord. But if you have a relationship with the Lord, you can count on the fact that the fruit is going to come because you're connected to the Lord. Yeah. It's not your own righteousness. Yeah. It's not your power, or your, your authority, or how you feel about yourself. It boils down to you are God's child. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if you are connected to God, then you can count on God taking care of the problem. Yeah. Did you? Did you guys ask? As I was putting this together, I, I remembered as a kid, we did an experiment in the class where <coughs> we had someone had a, uh, the teacher had this, uh, like a transformer. And you'd hold on, a kid would hold on to one end of this uh, electrode and then he would touch somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the current would go from the electrode through the wire into the guy that's touching it and then go through him and touch the other person. Mm -hmm. You ever see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what happens when you pray. You are connected to God and the power of God flows from him through you to somebody else. You know what that makes us? A conduit. You are a conduit for God's power to flow through. It's not your power the devil tries to get us to relinquish our right to things because we look at our own self as though it's up to us. Yeah. Remember that. Every time you, you pray for somebody, what you're doing is you have touched God his power is flowing through you and whomever you touch will receive the power of God. It is not your power. That's why Jesus said that he was vine and we're branches. It just flows through us. What stops it? Well, if we let go of God, Or if we put something in between us and God, that'll stop it. 
But as long as you got hold of God, you can believe that the power of heaven is going to flow through your life. That's why the Bible tells us to lay hands on the sick. People get discouraged when they pray for someone and they don't see that person get healed. And the devil says it's not working. It doesn't work for you. Do you remember when Jesus prayed for those lepers? And the Bible says, and they went on their way, and as they went, they were healed. Mm -hmm. There's immediate healing, and then there is the healing that comes over a period of time. But it's still God. Mm -hmm. But the devil wants you to stop praying. Why? Because that disconnects the power of heaven to everybody else you can come in contact with. Your faith has got to be in God and God alone. We want to read again, Daniel, I want to just focus 10 through 19 real quick. Daniel 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but Daniel. against the... I want to read Daniel 10. Oh. That's all right. Daniel 10. That's all right. Daniel 10. Daniel 10, 10 through 19. Why don't you go ahead? You are a good reader. Yeah. <laughs> ten, ten, ten through nineteen. Okay. A hand touched me and sent me trembling on my knees, my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he stand this to me, and when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persian, the prince of the Persian kingdom, rest, uh, resisted me twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I detained I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with, I, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked, the one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish. Because of the vision, my Lord, I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed, he said. Peace. Be strong now. Be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. All right. Did you hear it there? When we pray, a lot of times praying isn't easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we pray, praying isn't easy. Yeah. And it wears you out. Yeah. Heard about a man named Pray and Hide. And they found him. Whenever he would go to do a meeting, he would send people in like a month ahead of time and they would begin to pray and fast for the revival that was going to come when he showed up. Yeah. And they, he didn't show up for a meeting. Somebody went to find him, and they found him dead on the floor, sprawled across a map. 
And they, the doctor said that he died of a broken heart. He was so burdened for souls. And this is what Daniel was going through. When he said that he had no strength left in him. He couldn't talk. He couldn't do anything. He was just whipped. It was too much for him to wrap his little mind around. And he was just... It was too much. He was overwhelmed. And then, what does the Bible say? That God touched him. You know, when, when you're beyond what you can deal with, usually it's because of, this is, what, this is why I believe most people get worn out. Because what they believe is different than what they see. And they don't understand how it can go from what they see to what they believe. Mm -hmm. And it overloads them and they begin to grieve over all of this. But the Bible says that God showed up and touched Daniel and strengthened him. I believe what God wants to do in your life is to meet with you and strengthen you. That you could believe for the promise that God has shown you. That you wouldn't be worn out any longer. Why don't people pray? We're detaching ourselves from the one thing that gives us power. It's our only hope. Without God, we can do nothing. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. We're just not praying. So how did God bring healing to him? Verse 19. He said, O man greatly beloved. must have felt like a worm. He said, oh man, greatly beloved. First thing, fear not. Fear not. And the second thing was peace. First, God took his fear. Second, God gave him peace. And then thirdly, God said, be strong. This is how God ministers to us. He lets us know of his love and then he ministers us to us. He gives us what? First thing he gives us is victory over fear. Fear not. Yeah. And then God is going to give you peace. And then thirdly, he wants you to stand strong. What did the remember in the Old Testament when they're getting ready to cross into the the promised land? God said, "Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage." This is when God ministers to His saints. Be strong and of good courage. Don't doubt what you see as God's inability. Don't begin to doubt what God told you. Stand strong. Believe for what God told you. When God ministers to us, he brings an end to our fear Peace that passes all understanding. You know, peace that passes all understanding. Have you ever been praying and just felt it's all right? It's going to be okay. And you open your eyes and everything's still the same. But you know in your heart it's all right. 
That's peace that passes understanding. We don't know why we got that peace, but it's there. And then you can move in faith, in courage. Do what you're supposed to do, not wavering. Not wavering, just do what God tells us to do. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus finally my brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are noble Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, think on these things. Our need, church, is to walk with God in peace. The Bible goes on to say, meditate on these things. The things that we've heard, the things we've learned. You know what a lot of people have done? They have gotten rid of the thing that they knew was right. The thing that God had told them. And when you let go of that, it creates a void in your life. And it gives you no direct, you lose your direction. Because the thing you were going for is now gone. So you begin to just move like a reed in the wind. We're blown about by every wind and doctrine. What we need to do is focus our eyes again on what we do know. What do we know? God hears our prayer. Amen. And that there's no weapon formed against you that'll prosper. What do we know? God gave you dreams and visions. Don't let those go. Meditate on those things. Hang on to those things. Don't let the devil have those things. You know, when the children of Israel went back in to take land that had been stolen from them, the Bible says that they went in and dug again the wells. Mm -hmm. Place where they used to have water. The devil had plugged it all up. And they had to go back in and do the same thing that they had done before. But there was life there. There are things God wants you to do. And you have to believe God to do them. Don't walk in fear. Don't doubt what happens when you pray. What happens when we pray? Why don't people pray? Church, tonight, I believe with all of my heart 
that everything God spoke to us is true. And I believe that one of the reasons why we've lost our direction as Christians is because we've let the devil take the thing that we were that was set as our goal. Let's do what God has for us. Amen. And don't doubt. Let's bow our heads. God, we know that you have a purpose for each one of our lives. We know, God, that you hear our prayers. And I ask tonight, Father, that you would stir again in every heart here, that you would stir again, God, that desire to pray. That you would stir again, God, within our heart a desire to be with you, to be one with you. That your power would flow through our lives. That you could touch people through us. Help us to be the conduit that you can move through, God. We trust you, Lord. And I pray now, God, for these that have felt wearied by the battle. Father, I pray for these that have felt as though it's been too much for them to carry. Father, I pray that you would take away all fear. You have not given us the spirit of fear. Let your peace come upon this people, God. And let your peace rule and reign in their lives. And God, bring the faith once delivered to the saints of old. Let us rise up as lions, God, against the lies of the devil that we would fulfill all that you've called us to. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Amen. Pray. We're going to give to the Lord. Everything you do, church, let it be personal. Don't just let yourself go through the motions. When we give, we give to the Lord. And it's God. He receives it. as you pray. Ask God's blessing on the offering. Lord Jesus, bless this offering right now that we have here. Lord, that we're giving this evening. Lord, we love you with all our hearts and our minds and our souls. You are king of kings and Lord of lords. And as we pray, Lord, we know that you hear our words. Bless you. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, God, we need you. The 
promises of the Lord are what? Amen. 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 God bless every one of you. Pray on somebody the rest of this week. Lay hands on someone. Watch what God does. <laughs> You're slain in the Holy Ghost.